Hey, Glenn. Okay, buddy. Just like I promised you, here's a quick little basic introduction to fly fishing. You should be able to go right out on the animus and catch it, a, catch a trout with what I tell you right here, okay? All right, first we'll start with some of the flies. Some of the, you, All you need are these flies in your uh, fly box, and you can catch some fish. And I put a penny here for perspective, so that's a penny. Let me show you. These are the flies that we're going to talk about. And then these are dry flies. But let's start here. You always need a pair of nips of uh, forceps, okay? Kind of a necessity. Let me set my camera up here. This guy right here is called a copper john. That red wire can come in all different kinds of colors, but this is a size 18. Yeah, yeah, that's an 18. That uh, it's a great fly. This is a size. This looks like a 16. This is a prince nymph because of that cape. That those are supposed to simulate uh, wings, wing sacs on the back. And it's wrapped, got some gold wire wrapping, but it's called a bead head. These are all bead heads. These are great flies. And these do fish wet. This is a hare's ear. A golden ribbed hare's ear. And they call that because it's tied with the, the mask of a, of a hare. So that's actually rabbit fur they used to dub that with. Another great fly. That one, that one looks like a 20. That one's really small. Here's the penny here again. And this last one, this is called a pheasant tail. Great fly. Pheasant tail on Hey, we're doing a video for Glenn. Great fly here, buddy. You cannot go wrong with this fly. And this is a wet, a dry fly. So you fish this on top of the water like a fly skimming across it. That is called a caddis fly. That's actually what I caught that trout on the animus with. I threw this right next to the current and uh, the fish came up and just <laughs> ate that sucker, man. It's awesome. There's nothing better than catching a fish on a dry fly, dude. Yeah, you catch, you catch two dry. You catch two it was dry. big, wasn't it? Yeah. You got, Topi's helping me narrate here. This is a mayfly. Yeah, that's a mayfly. And you see how I got a hold of the hook with my forceps right there, but this body comes out off the hook. That's a great, this is a great, great into example of a mayfly. Great. This is awesome. You got the wings right there. That hackle simulates the wings. It helps it float on the water and simulate some wing movement to the fish. And it's got this long tail. Great example of a mayfly. I saw these all over in Durango while we were there. Okay, so those are the basic flies. Now, I'm going to show you this. This is the leader that you buy, okay? 6X. If the water is really clear, like uh, sometimes in, Ch in Cheeseman Canyon up in, uh, by Deckers in Denver, I, I have to get 7X just because those fish are so scare sketchy. But it comes in a, in a little sack like this. Here's one that's not been opened. And it's just rolled up in there. And I got this from Walmart. They're like two or three bucks a piece. For some of the real good uh, leaders that are fluorocarbon, though, you could pay six bucks a liter for them. Okay? So here's my fly reel. Like I said, all a reel does is hold line in fly fishing. The important thing is the rod, which you have a great rod, which by if you don't start taking this up, I want that rod back. But anyway, here's the leader. This is the fly line right here off of the reel. Here's where my leader is connected to the fly line. This actual fly line has had a loop here. So I can just do like a perfection loop and just sunk it through there and put the end through and then it goes on. And as you can see, this this line is tapered. It just gets skinnier and skinnier 
as we go here down to to this so here's the example of the tapered taperedness starts out thick ends out small but all you do you just tie these on like you do a uh, a lure which I'm sure you know how to do at least I hope you tie your lures on this way it's a basic you know fisherman's knot you just put it through put it through like that excuse my get all these flies out of the way here we're gonna tie on I guess this is the pheasant tail and you just twist that baby up about eight times or so let's twist them up there you go. And then you twist them down. So you get that loop there, and then you just put the end through like that. Hold it. And boom. There's your knot. Then we'll just use these nips. Always got to have a pair. These are great nips. Got a nail knot tool right there and uh, some other stuff. You nip that off. So there's your fly. Tied up and set to go. Then you get a strike indicator. Looks like this. Looks like this right here. These are great strike indicators. You just take that, take that fly line, put it through, and just twist that baby on there. These are pretty easy to I'm sure you'll figure those out. But there you go. So you got your strike indicator down to your fly. And you just put that up. I mean, for example, let me find my pin here. So here's the water level. There's the river bottom. You want your strike indicator floating on top of the water up here. Down here, give you your fly. Just kind of grazing if just a little above the water, the bottom. Just so it's kind of almost dragging bottom. So however length you think that will achieve that, put your strike indicator up that far. And that's the basics. You can take that out right now and catch it. You throw that into the current, throw it always into the current, always fish upstream, never downstream, and just let that baby float on down. You want it to have a natural float to it and uh, guarantee to catch you a fish. All right, Glenn, signing off. Talk to you later. Yeah. Say bye to Topi. He's our. Bye. Say bye. 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 Okay. No,